Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship as we come to worship our Lord and Savior together at this day. Uh, we are continuing our theme of a walk through Holy Week. Uh, I've had a number of people tell me, well, wait a minute, Palm Sunday was not last week. Why did we celebrate Palm Sunday? No, Palm Sunday was not last week, but as we have our theme of a walk through Holy Week, uh, we are going off schedule to focus on uh, these uh, holy days of Holy Week to uh, have a uh, good emphasis uh, and really dig into uh, some of these themes, uh, a lot of these services that many people don't experience. So we want you to be able to uh, experience those, and uh, we just don't know what Holy Week is going to look like uh, this year. So uh, spreading it out and having it on Sundays is uh, even more of a benefit. So Today we have our theme of Monday Thursday, and uh, specifically focusing on uh, the Lord's Supper, the last meal that Jesus has with uh, his disciples. Next week will be another Sunday of Monday Thursday, and uh, we will be uh, focusing on uh, the foot washing, the uh, servanthood of Jesus that command uh, to uh, love and serve others. So we will continue uh, with uh, these uh, different themes of Holy Week uh, through our time of Lent. Uh, so keep joining us uh, Sunday mornings as uh, we uh, continue with worship. We do have our congregational meeting right after worship today, and uh, we invite you to stay on Zoom. If you are on Zoom, stay on this link and uh, join us uh, for our congregational meeting. We do have all of our materials uh, in the back uh, in the narthex, uh, our annual report, our constitution changes, uh, and uh, the rest of the information we'll be uh, bringing to you. That information is online as well on our website. Uh, so uh, check that out on our congregational meeting page. We do invite uh, children to uh, join us for Sunday school at home. We do have many resources on our website for Lent. And uh, it'll be uh, kind of walking with us uh, in the time of Lent. So uh, go to our website under the Children's Ministries page and uh, check out uh, those resources for you to join for um, Sunday School at Home. And then uh, finally, uh, we uh, give thanks to Cliff and Kay Mosier for uh, the flowers uh, this Sunday in uh, memory of uh, their daughter, Valerie Kay. I invite you to stand as you are able as we join in confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we are called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and gives the peace of reconciliation. On this day, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Let us take a moment for silent confession. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us join in singing our opening hymn, All Who Are Welcome.
here in truth we will be fed. You that you'd for days of food us, all our horses of food, taste and see the grace eternal taste and see that God is good. All who hunger never a stranger seeker be a welcome guest. Come from restlessness and roaming here in joy we keep the feast. We that once were lost and scattered in communion's love have stood. Taste and see the grace, eternal taste, and see that God is good. All who hunger sing together, Jesus Christ is living bread. Come from loneliness and longing, here in peace we have been fed. Blessed are those who from this table live their days in gratitude. Taste and see the grace, eternal taste, and see that God is good. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, God in, in the, the sharing, sharing of, of a meal, meal your, your Son established a new covenant for all people. people. Grant that by, by the power of your Holy Spirit, this sign of our life in faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our readings. First reading is taken from Exodus in the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also. 
after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. He began to be distressed and to say to one to him, one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to the one, uh, to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. For eating, He took a loaf of bread, and after blessing, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. It's in peace our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of you took maybe a table class or etiquette at class when you were young? Some? How many of you still follow those rules and manners and etiquette? <laughs> we don't need to know that. No. We have so many uh, things. So many ways uh, of, uh, you know, what fork to use, uh, how to set the table, uh, where we should be sitting sometimes, napkin on the plate, laps, things that we are supposed to do, etiquette that we have, uh, many uh, different uh, rules. Things like use the fork or say please, please pass whatever it may be, not reaching and grabbing Wiping our mouth, napkin, chewing with our mouth uh, closed. uh, That's one of my biggest pet peeves. Saying uh, thank you. Not picking our teeth, not shoveling food into our mouths, uh, not making rude comments, but being uh, grateful. We all have those stories of uh, family gatherings uh, where there are many people sitting around a table uh, 
or throughout the house, gathering for Thanksgiving or Christmas, and those awkward moments that seem to come. Someone does something or someone says something that they really probably shouldn't do or say. Someone drinks a little bit too much, becomes the center of attention, or maybe makes a mess, or something just slips out uh, confronting someone about uh, a situation. Those awkward moments. Things that we laugh at now, uh, but things that when it's occurring, we just sit back wishing that we were not there. Well, confrontation is healthy in relationships, but there's a time and a place. And the dinner table with others seated there usually is not that time or place. Well, this is exactly what's happening at this Passover meal that Jesus is having with his disciples. First, we hear about Jesus uh, sending two disciples to go and prepare the Passover for them. And uh, he sends them saying, follow a guy carrying a jug of water. And the house he goes into, uh, then ask that owner, where is my guest room? Well, as I said in one of my devotions this last week, I think Jesus has known every step of the way what is going to be happening with the donkey, he uh, knew, and I think he made that plan with the owner to be able to take that donkey. And I uh, am pretty certain that Jesus has already talked to the owner of this house maybe months or a year or two back, preparing for this Passover meal, for the disciples to come and eat here. So the disciples go and they have this meal prepared and they sit down and eat. And the first thing that happens is Jesus saying in verse 18. And when they, or when they had taken their places, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. The disciples say, surely not I one after another. Talk about how awkward that must be for those disciples who now are being confronted by Jesus' words of saying, one of you will betray me. And they hope that it's not them. So they're eating at this Passover meal. This meal that the Jews uh, eat every year. As we heard in our first reading in Exodus, uh, that uh, this meal first started when they were slaves in Egypt. After the ten, ten uh, or in the middle of the ten plagues, right before that tenth plague, God tells Moses what the Israelites are supposed to do. So that uh, their uh, firstborn child will not be killed in this 10th plague. So that is the Passover. The angel of death that passes over the house of the Israelites uh, who have prepared this meal quickly, not even allowing the bread to rise uh, and slaughtering a lamb for every household or sharing if they're not big enough, and putting that lamb's blood over their doorposts so that the angel of death passes over. So now every year it's a remembrance for the Jews. On the 15th day of the first month in the Jewish calendar, that they are to partake in this Passover meal. A very symbolic meal. Being reminded of God's covenant that he makes with the people. And here in this meal is where these awkward situations occur. And also where Jesus makes a new covenant. So within this Passover meal... After Jesus uh, confronts the disciples saying, one of you will betray me. 
Judas in himself knows that it is him and how awkward he must feel because he actually has already promised that he will betray Jesus to the leaders, the government. In verse 10, right before our reading for today, we hear, Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he, Judas, began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. Jesus knows exactly what's going to be happening. And he's confronting Judas right in front of the other disciples. But also wanting to warn the disciples of what's going to happen. And that it is one of them who is going to betray him. So presumably this meal continues and they eat this Passover meal as they traditionally do. Maybe you have experienced the Seder meal that we have done here at St. Philip. So then during the meal, Jesus takes a loaf of bread, blesses it, breaks it and gives it to the disciples saying, take This is my body. Now the disciples don't really know exactly what's going on. So they've got to have this puzzled look on their face, not knowing exactly what Jesus is doing or what he is saying. But this is my body? Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to the disciples saying, This is my blood. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. And Jesus ends by saying, Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day. And when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. The disciples don't know what's going on, which makes this part of the dinner awkward as well. But they know afterwards this meaning of what Jesus talks about. How uh, they are able to partake in this meal as they partake in the Passover meal. To remember what God has done for them, bringing them out of slavery, out of the land of Egypt to the promised land. And now in this meal of bread and wine, they are able to remember Jesus and this covenant of himself. Giving himself for us, dying on the cross for us, giving us his body and his blood so that we may have life so that we may have forgiveness and so that we may have God. And so they now are, and now we partake in this meal of Holy Communion to remember what Jesus has done for us as God invites us to receive him, his body and blood as we receive that bread and wine being reminded of God's love and God's grace for us in our lives. It makes that one awkward meal not so awkward for us. For we know the hope of salvation that we have. And we're reminded of that every time we take this teeny little wafer and this tiny amount of grape juice. But that's all it takes To know that God came for you. That God came for you at this time. That he gives himself for you. So may we be reminded of Jesus' sacrifice for us. And in this meal of the Lord's Supper, being reminded of this act of love. Thanks be to God for God's love. 
and for God giving himself to us and giving us a way to remember what Jesus has done for us. Amen. Please join in reading and reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe believe in one one God, God, the the Father, Father, the the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of of all all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe, believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, God light from light, light, true God from true God, God begotten not, not made, made, of one being with the Father, through, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O God. Your Hear mercy us. is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving, especially Pam, Joanne, Art and Elvira, and those we name our heart, our own lips. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as uh, we receive uh, our offering. If you have an offering to give in person, we do have offering plates in the front of the baptismal font. Otherwise, uh, we invite you uh, to uh, give online uh, on our website. We are grateful for your love, for your support, uh, for your offerings.
Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places uh, give praise and thanks to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death that gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all of the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, forgive and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us now receive him. I invite you to get out at your communion, uh, whether you're at home or here in person, as we uh, partake in receiving the body and blood of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And a blessing for our children and those not receiving communion. Child of God, may God bless you and keep you. May you know that Jesus came for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal to you the nations 
and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. I receive the living God, and my heart is full of joy. I receive the living God, and my heart is full of joy. Jesus said, I am the bread, needed luck to give you. Peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. God.